This is the latest 2020 iPad Pro. This one happens to be the second generation model because it's the 11 inch, but there is a 12.9 inch model and that is considered to be the fourth generation. Whichever model you went with, the internals and the hardware is identical as both will still have the new dual camera setup as well as the new LiDAR sensor. Now with those new cameras and that new sensor, there is some new features. So in case this is your first iPad that has this new home buttonless design, here are 20 features that everybody should know about. So you could multitask like a pro. Let's begin. All right, for this first one, just to make sure everybody's on the same page, we're gonna start off with gestures because there's actually additional gestures that not a lot of folks know about. If this is your first time using these home buttonless iPads, if you use an iPhone that also is home buttonless, you are basically already familiar with the common one. So obviously you could do this to open up that, swipe from the center, notifications, corner, control center, you know, the basics. But additional gestures that not a lot of folks know about if you take your hands, all five fingers, and you do like this, it'll actually quickly open up the multitask. And if you select the app, and if you do a very similar thing, you'll also close the app. So you don't have to swipe from underneath to close the application. Other additional gestures that everybody should at least know whenever you have a full screen keyboard like so, if you actually pinch, you can minimize it. This little bottom part actually allows you to move it around. So if you wish to operate the keyboard single-handedly, that's how you do this. Then other additional gestures, if you take three fingers like so, if you swipe left, it'll actually undo. If you swipe right, it'll redo. And if you take three fingers and highlight the sentence or the word, if you pinch like so, it'll actually copy, it will paste. All right, real quick, I've been seeing this a lot. Yes, it's true, the iPad Pro does not have it built in the calculator. Well, kinda. Although there's no dedicated app like what you expect to find like on your iPhone and such. On the iPad, you don't have that. But if you actually have to do some kind of money conversion or mathematical problem, by simply bringing down the search bar right here, you, you could enter the equation right here on the search and Siri will actually answer it for you right here. So if you're not certain on a certain math equation, you could just enter it here and it'll give you the result. You could also do measurements too. So taking a screenshot on these home buttonless iPads, it's a little bit different. The way you do it is simply just hold down the power button and the volume up. This will actually take a screenshot. As you just saw, we just took a screenshot. You could take the Apple Pencil and doodle if you wish. Let's just hit done, delete this because we don't need it. Other ways you could take screenshots is if you have an Apple Pencil, you can actually swipe from the corner edge like this and bam. It takes a screenshot and again, you could draw right away. Now for number four, before we move on to the more complex things, let's just quickly just go over the multitasking. Basically, this is gonna be the complete setup if you wanna multitask between a bunch of different apps. So let's quickly just launch the YouTube app as a prime example to start this. Swipe down to bring your docs, hit the app you wanna open, click and drag it to a corner, let the screen open up like so, select whatever area you want to resume from, you could extend it, and eliminate it all together. You can bring the app again, click and drag it. Also, when two applications are open like so, you can actually click and drag the app to the other app. If you take an additional app, you can center it right here. It'll automatically put it in like mobile mode. And to add more, you could just do this, put it right there over it, and this will convert the apps to the mobile version of the application. And then if you wanna know how to close these mobile version apps, it's really simple. You could just do this, just swipe up, and that's how you could close it all. Now a thing about watching videos on YouTube, unlike other video providers like Netflix, they have like picture in picture mode. Unfortunately, YouTube doesn't support this, but there's a unique walk around. If you download this application, it only costs $3, and in my opinion, it's worth it, especially if you multitask a lot. But once you have the app downloaded, what you can do is tap the share button, hit the more, go down to where you see send to corner tube, tap on this, allow the video to load, literally swipe from the bottom, and now you have this little picture. And now since we have this window playing our video, if you actually do this, it will resume back where you last left off with your multitask window. So you can move this window around, and yeah. Now being an iPad that charges via a USB-C port, it does support fast charging, so if you plug it in with an 18 watt or higher power supply, it should charge the iPad fast. But a thing that not a lot of folks know about besides this, if you unplug it, you could take advantage of that massive battery and plug in a USB-C to lightning port or other and literally charge your iPhone. 
in case you ever have to. Of course, it's gonna drain the battery life on the iPad, but it's so large, you should be able to get one or two complete charges on your iPhone. Now, it still alarms me and shocks me that not a lot of folks know about this, but this iPad actually has a flash, which you could enable in the control center, and it gets really bright. Another feature that's innovated, but not a lot of people know about, yes, you could go into the control center and enable the QR code, but you don't have to do this because the regular camera app will actually scan the QR code and will take you to the right URL. So you don't have to do that in the control center, freeing up some space. So this being a new dual camera setup on an iPad, some new features and hidden tips is this. When recording, if you double tap the screen, it will actually make it full. And if you tap it again, it will change the viewfinder to eliminate the crop. You could do the same thing on landscape mode as well. And then if you wanna quickly switch from the wide lens to the ultra wide lens, you could tap this little number icon right here and it will quickly jump. If you tap it again, it will take you back. If you tap and hold, you get this little wheel and you could get some creative effects like the dolly zoom by simply zooming or zooming out towards the opposite direction as you're walking towards the subject. Now, unfortunately, if you're using an iOS device running the latest firmware, the tapping to change the resolution doesn't work. Unfortunately, if you wanna change the resolution, you have to go back in your settings and just go to the camera tab right here. And this is where you can change the resolution for all the cameras. So you can go up to 60 FPS. And this is also where you could change the slow motion if you want to. Other additional goodies you could do with the camera app is if you go to the panoramic mode, if you tap this little arrow, you could change the position where you start. Now, as we all know, the iPad is the first Apple product to actually have a new LiDAR sensor and actually works surprisingly well. And there's actually a, is a lot of support already available for it. If you go right now in the app store and type in AR, there's a lot of AR apps that actually will take advantage of this new hardware. Some of my favorite ones is Angry Birds actually works surprisingly really well, as well as a bunch of other third party ones. If you're interested to know what are some of my favorite, I'll link them in the description down below. Now, new for iPad OS is now we have full mouse and keyboard support. It can be either Bluetooth or wired. If you use a USB hub, you could attach it on your iPad. But the important keyboard commands is this. If you want to unlock your iPad, you can simply just tap the space bar and by tapping that, it will also enable Face ID to scan and unlock itself. You could do this with the smart cover keyboard as well. If you want to see the important list of commands on the keyboard, just by simply holding down the command and space key, it will show you the command list right there. And for mouse support, this is also here. The cursor has been updated, so now it will actually change on the icon that you're over, so you can select it. And on the top right hand corner, if you click right here, it will actually bring down the control center. And if you want to leave it, click outside and it will close it. You can also swipe from the center to bring down your notifications, but I don't like doing it this way. I recommend just clicking on the date and time because it's more quicker to bring that bar down, if that makes sense. And then when you pair the Apple official trackpad on your iPad, if you have one laying around, the same on-screen gestures can also be used on the iPad Pro. So all your major important ones are here. So you could close apps like so and navigate your tablet, different pages, just by swiping your fingers like you would on the screen. Now, there's a lot more I could cover on this, but it will make the video super long. So if you wanna see a separate videos of everything you could do with the mouse and keyboard, comment down below and let me know. However, even with this setup, if you wanna play popular games with the mouse and keyboard, it doesn't support it very well. So I would recommend using a real gaming controller, like either the official one by Microsoft or the PlayStation 4 one, maybe PlayStation 5, who knows. And the pairing process for them is really easy. If, you, if this is a brand new controller, hasn't been paired yet, it's automatically gonna be set to pair mode, but in your Bluetooth setting, just select it. On a PlayStation, you simply hold the PlayStation and the share button at the same time until this light begins flashing. And then the process that is identical is to select it on your Bluetooth settings. And now you may find playing games is actually enjoyable on this tablet, especially when you're actually using a controller. You're not only able to see more because you're not touching the screen or anything, but this genuinely does feel like I'm playing on a console. So popular games like Call of Duty and stuff like that are evolving. So this is a feature that I'm sure a lot of people will love. Other nifty tools is that you could transfer files from either your PC or maybe an SD card from your camera. You can literally export PDFs, 
put them in an external storage like this, and then take that external drive, plug it in directly with the USB-C in to the iPad Pro. And using the Finder app, you can actually select that drive and transfer those files to your device or edit them right there on the iPad itself. And then if you are somebody that actually relies on the official Apple Notes app, if you have an Apple Pencil, you just tap anywhere on the screen, it will quickly launch you from the lock screen to that app. And you could take as many notes as you want, and when you tap done, it will actually save. And as an example, let's go ahead and type in duh. I wanna show you something, the two, there we go. And we tap done, and we unlock our iPad. If you search the same thing that we just typed in, Boom, see right here? The software will be able to identify the text that we've written down earlier. And another thing about this, if you actually start typing in something with the text, you can actually put as many sentences or paragraphs as you want, it'll automatically like generate it. But you can't unfortunately draw over the text. There's a separate line here, which I'm gonna show you. If you want to extend it, you can actually drag it down so you can have more space for you to scribble. And if you want to draw some more, you could do the same thing. And it actually gives you the little nifty tool where you can extend or make it shorter. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, then you're going to really enjoy this next video right here. As I recently created a video, reasons why you should consider getting the Apple Pencil in case you haven't yet. There's a lot of interesting hidden features in there as well. And then this video over here, that has a video that YouTube thinks that you will like. Feel free to watch either or. But again, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.